Um, we, we do have some problems on Earth here right now. Um, the Palestinians apparently fired rockets into Jerusalem, which were intercepted by the Israeli Iron Dome defense system. But the Israelis have called up 40,000 reserves, and they're exchanging rocket fire with Hamas as we speak. Um, the Hamas tried invading Israel by sea with several um, boats full of armed people. They were repelled and, I guess, dispatched and killed. And so this is going to escalate, so you can expect to see some heavy-duty fighting there in the Middle East right now, and who knows who's going to be stupid and do something more um, aggressive. So I want everybody to contact Young Gibby's uh, associate and get some Go Foods. Go Foods, of course, have a 25-year shelf life. They're, they are um, freeze-dried. They are all non-GMO. They're all non-MSG. They're all organic, and half of them are gluten-free. Those are my favorites. And then, of course, um, we do have the, the problem we're going to talk about today. Oh, I'd also get the book God Bless America. God Bless America. It tells you how to survive all this kind of stuff in your own home. And so I urge you to get the book God Bless America and the Go Foods. So, because people are going to start emptying shelves and all that kind of stuff, and you might as well be ahead of the curve. All right. What I want to talk about today kind of is found in the book uh, God Bless America. It's called, um, uh, let's see here, shrinking disc. Shrinking, the, you know, your height is going to shrink. You have disc disease, degenerative disc disease, back problems, peripheral neuropathies. And most people, even doctors, don't understand peripheral neuropathy. So I want you to get a hold of that book, Epigenetics, The Death of the Genetic Theory of Disease Transmission, and the book, Rare Earths Been Cures. Those two books together will cover what we're going to cover today, Epigenetics, The Death of the Genetic Theory of Disease Transmission, and the book, Rare Earths Been Cures. And most people know about sciatica where you get low back pain, you get numbness, tingling, and burning down in your feet. And then, um, and you can get relief by chiropractic um, adjustments. You can get relief by acupuncture. There's all kinds of topical creams. We sell uh, the wonderful CM cream. And, of course, when you have pain down your legs, you want to put the CM cream on your back, your lower back, uh, where the peripheral nerves, the, the spinal nerves come out from between the lumbar vertebrae. These are the sciatic nerves. Longest nerves of the body they actually come out between your uh, vertebrae and your back, and they go all the way down your leg, down to your toes. Longest nerves of your body. And then uh, restless leg syndrome it usually happens when you lay down or sit in one of these uh, fold-back chairs and you have the switch on the side kind of thing. And um, that's because in, in this position where you lay down or you lean back in one of these chairs, uh, it actually uh, puts your vertebrae in such a position they're pinching the motor roots of the sciatic nerve, and so you get creepy crawlies in your legs, your legs jerk around. Another peripheral neuropathy that most people don't pay much attention to as a peripheral neuropathy, is uh, AFib, atrial fibrillation. Doctors want you to believe it's a heart deal, and so they actually will do a, uh, and they'll install, and they'll implant into a defibrillator, okay, and um, also uh, they will do an ablation. Uh, they will do a, um, which means they're going to kill your heart muscle. They will do a, um, retroversion, where they kill you, they electrocute you to death and hope to reboot your heart, and then they'll put you in the heart transplant list. And that's because um, the defibrillator, the pacemaker, the, the um, retro, retroversion, the, um, uh, the heart transplant, all these things are dealing with the heart. And this is not a heart problem. Atrial fibrillation is, in fact, a back problem. Between T1, 2, 3, and 4, the thoracic vertebrae, T1, 2, 3, and 4, because of the shrinking of the disc in between them, um, degenerative disc disease, and then, of course, the, the vertebrae get closer together, and they pinch the roots of these spinal nerves. And down lower uh, in your pelvic area, man or woman, you can get incontinence, you get UTIs. They're not really UTIs, but you have burning on urination, uh, incomplete emptying your bladder, you can have irritable bladder where you just walk along and just, oh, my gosh, you just urinated all over yourself. You didn't even know there was a signal that you had to go. And that's because the nerves are being pinched in your back because of degenerative disc disease. And, again, the um, ablation, the retroversion, installing pacemakers and defibrillators, heart transplants, no, that's going to work on the problem because it's a back problem, not a heart problem. 
And I've had run into people where they, they've been on antibiotics for four, five, six years because they have burning on urination. Uh, they have incontinence where they pee on themselves and so forth. And the doctors misinterpret all this as a urinary tract infection because they just go by the symptom urinating. And they even try. They culture the urine. They can't find any bugs, and yet they still treat it as a urinary tract infection. But it's really a back problem. So I want you to get a hold, again, of the book Epigenetics, The Death of the Genetic Theory of Disease Transmission, the book Rare Earths Forbidden Cures, and you're going to learn how all this stuff works. You're going to know more than doctors, and that's scary. Not the fact that you know it, but the fact that they don't know it. And when you think about it, uh, you can predict it. You can, uh, I call them shrinkers. You can see people walking down the street. You can see that they've shrunk an inch or two or three or four or five or six or seven or eight. I've seen people who've shrunk 10 inches since they were 20 years old. They're in their 70s. You can tell they've shrunk. So get a hold of the book Epigenetics, The Death of the Genetic Theory of Disease Transmission, the book Rare Earths Men Cures, if you have sciatica, restless leg syndrome, atrial fibrillation, if you have um, irritable bladder syndrome, chronic UTIs that never go away, incontinence, you'll be able to help yourself if the doctors have failed you. We'll be back with more truth, justice, and the young Gibbity way on dead doctors don't lie for these messages. Okay, Doug, what pearls of wisdom do you have for us? Well, this is a Fox News story, and it is headlined, uh, Test for Stroke Risk Not Recommended, and this comes from the United States Preventative Services Task Force. They say uh, some health fairs are offering these screenings for a buildup plaque in the blood vessels in the neck, which is a risk factor for stroke. However, new guidelines recommend against getting such screening in people who don't have any symptoms. They say the screening test itself involves an ultrasound of arteries in the neck. It's not invasive, but has a high false positive rate. And the false positive indicates disease in people who do not have a condition, according to the guidelines. And they go on to say that means uh, harmful uh, treatments uh, because it could lead to unnecessary surgeries and other treatments, which themselves come with a risk of heart attack or stroke. And the task force concluded that the harms of screening for the condition known as carotid artery stenosis outweighs the benefits. Uh, these guidelines reaffirm 2007 recommendations from the task force also recommending against screening for carotid artery stenosis in the general population. According to a Dr. Larry B. Goldstein, he's a neurologist at Duke University, he wrote an editorial that accompanied these guidelines as the potential consumers of these services should be aware that the test is unlikely to prevent them from having a stroke or lead to improvements in their health. The guidelines do not apply to people who've had a stroke, transient ischemic attack, mini stroke, or other neurological symptoms in the, the past, according to the task force. And they say that it does recommend that people have screening tests for other risk factors for strokes, such as high blood pressure and cholesterol checks. But we know cholesterol has nothing to do with heart disease. Absolutely. Of course, in uh, November of 2010, uh, the U.S. Um, Department of Health and Human Services Office of the Inspector General pointed out that 15,000 seniors are killed every month by doctors and hospitals who are sent in for these types of screening tests. 15,000 are killed every month. That's 180,000 a year who go in for screening tests and minor procedures, di minor diagnostic procedures. Doctors kill 15,000 a month in UN, U.S. hospitals. Now, the enemy in, in the war zone in the Middle East last year killed 375 soldiers. Here we have doctors in their workplace kill 180,000 a year, seniors who go in, they send them in there for screening tests, just like you described, the crowded screening test, and by misadventure, they kill. This is the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Office of Inspector General. This is not me. I'm just a reporter here. Published, front page of the newspapers. And so this, what you're saying, just fits exactly what this, what this report goes to. Um, this is just absolutely insane that seniors will go in for a, what would be called a non-invasive screening test, and they kill you, okay? And so, Doug, uh, thank you so much for the warning. We have to protect our seniors. We have to protect our veterans because the, the medical system has failed us so many different ways, and this is a big one. You do not want to be getting these, these minor, quote, minor diagnostic procedures and, quote, minor Screening test, colonoscopic exams. You can do your own for less than five bucks, and it's eighty percent um, accurate. The the actual colonoscopic exam, where they can puncture your intestines and, and cause you to have a belly infection, and die in three days, like Andy Rooney from 60 Minutes. They killed him as sure as they shot him in the head. And 
um, why would you go through that and, and the risk and the cost, which is like 2500 bucks versus 5 bucks for doing it yourself at home with a fit test, a fecal immunochemical test or an old coat blood test? Okay, this is really crazy. Well, thank you so much, Doug, for bringing these up. And uh, we'll be back with more Truth, Justice, and the Young Divity Way on Dead Doctors Don't Lie for these messages. Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. Let's head to Yuba City, California. Ed, Ron, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Hello, Ron, you're on the air. Hi, Dr. Wallach. It's Ron. Um, we talked last week about a, uh, my friend Larissa in Dubai, and uh, her son was going to go in for dialysis, and they recommended a kidney transplant. Well, somehow he was, she says uh, he was selected across 3,000 people um, to get the transplant, and he uh, did the transplant, and she would like to know um, uh, what products he should take and, and when to start. He's already had the surgery? Yeah, he did uh, He did it yesterday. And how much did he weigh? Uh, 152. Okay, well, <clears throat> as soon as he goes home, I'd go ahead and give him, uh, start him out with uh, one healthy brain and heart pack per month. Okay, our goal is to get him up to two after, you know, he goes after his first examination, everything's fine, he could go up to two, but right now just starting with one. And then I also want him to have one bottle a month of the Ultimate Daily Tablets because I want him to take three Ultimate Daily Tablets twice a day, three at breakfast, three at dinner, and one bottle of the Ultimate Daily Tablets will work. And they're designed to support and promote healthy blood pressure. They're designed to support and promote healthy blood flow through obstructed arteries. Uh, just basically, Ron, when somebody has kidney failure, <clears throat> most of the time there's nothing wrong with the kidney. When people have kidney failure, it's actually an obstruction of the small afferent arteries in the kidney that um, uh, bring dirty blood into the filtering unit called glomeruli. And so the goal here is to get the blood going into the filtering unit so it can, the kidney can do its job. The reason why the creatinine levels go up and the glomerular filtration rate, GFR, goes down is because no dirty blood is getting to the filtration unit, the glomeruli, because the arteries carrying the dirty blood are obstructed. And so that's where the job is, is to support the healthy blood flow through those obstructed arteries. And, of course, when he wants to take care of his new kidneys better than he did his old ones, which means he's got to give up the stuff that contributed to clogging the arteries in his kidneys. That means no fried foods, no processed meats with nitrates and nitrates. It means no deli slices, sandwich meats, sausage, ham, bacon, bologna, salami, pastrami, pepperoni, jerky, corned beef, et cetera. And then he needs to give up oils because they turn into trans fatty acids, heterocyclic means acrylamides, we're talking about absolutely, absolutely no olive oil, no coconut oil, absolutely no margarine, mayonnaise, celery, it's cooking oil, and feeds canned fish. You've got to be packed in water, mustard, tomato sauce, not oil. And then no gluten, no wheat, butter, or oats. It can maximize its absorption of nutrients as well as reduce the inflammation to the arteries. Okay, these things are caused by inflammation of the arteries. It has nothing to do with cholesterol. There's not a single cardiovascular disease that is caused by elevated blood cholesterol. Even the FDA in February of 2012 sent out an email to doctors. It was a front-page story in every newspaper in America that, um, guess what? Cholesterol-lowering drugs, statin drugs, increased your risk of type 2 diabetes by 52%. Now some disease by 100%. Why would you want that? We'll be back with Dead Doctors Don't Lie for these messages. Let's head to Monterey, California. Ed Rodrigo, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Hello, Rodrigo. You're on the air. Hello, Joe. I have a friend. Then in about a week or two, he's having surgery. His surgery is called right hemicolectomy. It's, uh, I guess he created a tumor in his colon called polyps. Oh, polyps and the okay. doctors want to remove half of his colon and, and uh, reconnect it back to one of his small intestines. Yeah. Okay, what I would do uh, immediately, Rodrigo, is have um, a second opinion from the medical school on the slides uh, of those polyps. I'm sure they took biopsies of them and maybe did a colonoscopic exam or saw them on a lower GI or whatever. Um, and I, I would say take out half of his colon for polyps, uh, which are, well, most of the time are benign and do not lead to cancer. It's kind of an overreach here. Maybe they're just trying to fund next week's payroll. And so what I would do is uh, have him get a second opinion based on the actual results 
about and, and descriptions of, of what he sees, the radiologist and, and the pathologist who looked at these polyps under the microscope are on x-rays. I wouldn't rush to judgment that. How old is this person? He's, uh, he's 67 years old. And he's I'm sorry, how old is he? And he weighs uh, 220. Okay, he's 70 years old? 67. Oh, 67, okay. Yeah, I, I would uh, have a second opinion from the university pathologist and the university radiologist <clears throat> on the material they already have. Uh, those samples should be sent to them to get their opinion. In the meantime... Um, he needs to change his diet because what people eat causes these polyps, things like fried foods, okay? Absolutely no fried foods, no exceptions. Absolutely no processed meats with nitrates, nitrites. It means no deli slices, no sandwich meats, no sausage, ham, bacon, bologna, salami, pastrami, pepperoni, jerky, corned beef, spam, and that kind of stuff. And then absolutely no oils. It means no coconut oil, no olive oil, no margarine, mayonnaise, salad, just these cooking oils. And then absolutely no gluten, no wheat, barley, and oats. Because I'd like to talk to your friend, Rodrigo, and see if he has the symptoms of um, oh, things like gluten intolerance. And a lot of times doctors will cut people's colons out. They think it's colon cancer. It's really just ulcerative colitis or maybe diverticulitis and so forth. And so uh, Crohn's disease is another one which is uh, caused directly by gluten intolerance. And just getting on a gluten-free diet and supplementing, the 90 essential nutrients can resolve a lot of these problems. So, again, before he has all this drastic surgery and it will shorten his life, uh, well, his quality of life will go way, way down. And so I would get a second opinion ASAP, okay? And then call me as soon as you get the information. In the meantime, get him on the diet, get him on the um, two healthy, uh, I'd get him on two healthy start packs to begin with, give him three of our ultimate selenium twice a day, that's two bottles a month. And give us a call and give us the results of the second opinion. We'll walk you through this. We'll be back after these messages. Well, let's head to Phoenix, Arizona. And Willie, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Hello, Willie, you're on the air. Yes. Hello? Hello, you're on the air. Yes, Willie Fletcher. Willie. Hi, how can I help you? And I was calling in, uh, Dr. Wallace, uh, about that. I, I have a mother, and she has uh, a slow heartbeat. And she has high blood pressure and uh, high cholesterol. And they say that she's uh, a little bit anemic. Okay, now hold your mom. She's 65 years old. Okay, and uh, let's see here. we got slow heart rate, high blood pressure, and anemic, and there was another one in there. Yes, uh, 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 the slow heart beat, and she has a... Uh, uh, her daughter, I'm going to say she has epileptic seizures. She's had them ever since she was 14 okay, I, I don't years want to old. Mix her, wait a minute. I don't want to mix her daughter in with this right now. No, uh, no, I'm, that, that's not her daughter. Uh, that, that's her. I'm okay. sorry. That, uh, okay, so she's got seizures, high blood pressure, slow heart, and anemia. Yes. I'm assuming she's on medication for all this. Yes, she is. And okay. it uh, looks like it's not doing any good for Well, her. yeah. How much does she weigh? She weighs 143. Okay. Does she have any skin problems like eczema, dermatitis, or psoriasis? Uh, no. Okay. Does she have any history of respiratory problems like asthma or chronic bronchitis? Well, no. She n- never had had anything like that, um, okay. asthma, nothing like that. Okay. Now, are you her, are, this is your mom, so have you ever had asthma? Nah, no, I haven't. Have you ever had skin problems yourself? Well, real rash. Okay, this is, how long you had that, since you were a kid? Uh, when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Okay, did you have any constipation or diarrhea problems? Yes. Which one? Uh, uh, diarrhea. Okay, this comes on and off since you were a kid? Yes. All right. Do you have children? Yes. yes. Do any of them have diarrhea or constipation or respiratory problems or skin problems? Yes. Okay, anybody get their appendix out? No. Okay. All right. Well, this is a Char thing. Um, let's see. How much does your mom weigh? 143 pounds, you say? Yes. Okay. Now, Char, uh, what, what's, what's Willie's mom's basic problem? Well, she has a gluten intolerance, and that's why she keeps having all these other things go wrong because she's not absorbing. So well, why, are, why are, are not the medications working? Because she's not absorbing them either. Very, very good. Now, 
uh, what's Willie and Willie's kids' underlying problems? They have a gluten intolerance, too. They got it from her, the mother. Because Mama passed it on. Correct. Okay. So what would you do for the mother? She's got high blood pressure. Uh, she's anemic, a slow heart rate. And, oh, let me ask you one more thing here, Willie. Has your mom shrunk any that you know of? Has she shrunk an inch or two? Uh, no. No. Yes, she's lost a lot of weight. Okay, now what about height? Uh, she's 5'8". Okay, was she 5'10 was she when she was young, or was she always 5'8"? She's always been 5'8". Mm-hmm. Do me a favor and measure her and see if she's shrunk. Okay? All righty. Yeah, see if she's shrunk. Okay, Char, what would you give her mother at 143 pounds? I would give her, well, start out with one healthy brain and heart pack for the okay. heart. You know. Okay. And also for the seizures. Yep. Yes. And what about the and high blood pressure? High blood pressure, I'd give her the ultimate daily. Okay, excellent. Okay, you're exactly right. So... 143 pounds. Um, Willie, your mom should get one healthy brain and heart pack per month. I get her an extra bottle of selenium, so she could have three selenium at breakfast and three at dinner time. I want her to have um, also. I'd uh, get her an extra bottle of calcium or uh, OsteoFX Plus, so she could have one ounce of breakfast, one ounce of dinner. She can have one scoop of the Beyond Tangerine 2.0 Nutri Crystals at breakfast and dinner. Three of the EFA Pluses each day. That'll be one at breakfast, one at lunch, one at dinner. And Char points out for the high blood pressure and the anemia, I'd also have her take the ultimate daily tablets, three twice a day, as one bottle a month. And also for the seizures, I would throw in the um, Smart FX. Have her take three of those twice a day. And Smart FX has a very small soft gel capsule about the size of a pea, and it contains the DHAs and the EPAs, which are the raw materials for the brain to make neurotransmitters for everything from memory, cognition, problem-solving, as well as for normalizing brain function generally. Okay, so that's going to cover all her problems. Now, the gluten-free diet is going to uh, um, eliminate the rash or eczema or dermatitis and also the diarrhea. But it's got to be drop-dead gluten-free. Everybody in the house, including the dog and the cat and the fish and the bird and other people. And, Char, and we've seen people with many, many diseases when the underlying problem was a gluten intolerance they had um, uh, maybe a dozen specialists. And how many diseases have you seen in one person that are secondary to gluten intolerance? That, that woman in Canada had 22 diagnosed diseases. Right, that the, government, that the Canadian government was paying for, and she was going to 11 specialists, and she had 22 legitimately diagnosed diseases, and she just was not absorbing nutrition. And right. all of these people have to get on a gluten-free diet and supplement with the 90 essential nutrients and any secret sauce necessary for any specific disease. And this will support and promote maintenance repair. But a gluten-free diet is imperative here. We see thousands of these people a year, and it's amazing how badly the doctors miss it. So, Willie, give us a call. Uh, every couple of weeks, let us know how your mom's doing as you go through this. Okay, Doug, let's go to callers. Let's head to Plato, Texas. Ed, Pat, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Oh, Pat, you're on the air. Hello. Hi, how can we help you? Uh, I have varicose veins. Okay. Anything else? Uh, I also have uh, retinitis pigmentosa. Okay. Yeah, which is kind of a relative to macular degeneration. Okay. And... Um, Let's see here. Do you have any high blood pressure? Do you have any uh, spider veins, anything like that? Uh, some spider veins. Okay. Well, do you have to dye your hair or wear a wig? Or what, what, have you lost any hair color? Uh, yes, I have. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, Char, this I've is a Char thing. What do, what do you weigh, Pat? About 155. 155. And how tall are you, dear? 5'6". Uh, okay. Now... Uh, Char, what's what's the basic thing that's missing here? Copper. Yeah, the mineral copper. Um, Pat, you got a copper deficiency. We don't like to have people take and cherry pick individual nutrients, and so because you have things going on with your vascular system and hair, um, I would go ahead and take. I would go ahead. This this can be potentially dangerous. It can be life threatening if you have a ruptured aneurysm, which is an artery. Because with the same thing, copper deficiency, you get a breakdown of the elastic fibers in your blood vessels. 
So I would take two of the healthy brain and heart packs per month, and um, that will allow you to have one or three of the selenium twice a day, one ounce of the Osteo FX Plus at breakfast and dinner, two scoops of the Beyond Tan Tangerine twice a day, three of the EFA Pluses twice a day, three of the EFAs twice a day. And um, make sure you take one of our ultimate enzymes before each meal with a couple ounces of water. And then call us every couple of weeks and let us know how your blood vessels are going. Let us know how your, your eyes are going, and we'll walk you through this. We'll be back after these messages. We're back with Dead Doctors Don't Lie on the ZBS Radio Network. Dr. Joel Wallach here for Young TV and 95 Crusade. We do have lines open. Give us a call toll free, 1 379 2552. And Doug, let's go to callers. Let's head to Watsonville, California. And Nick, you're on with Dr. Wallach. Well, Nick, you're on the air. I'm very happy to have you. I'm a late bloomer with you, but better late than never. Hey, right. Hey, welcome to the family. What's up? Uh, a thing I, I've been said to have a flat foot, and uh, I kind of try and take pace the reason with it, and I'm seeing a lot of it. What, and I don't hear any talk at all of Flatfoot. What is it, and do you, is it more than just Dr. Souls would take care of? And <laughs> what do you, okay, when people get flat feet, that means you have a stretching of the uh, tendons and ligaments in the feet, uh, things like plantar fascia, which is a very flat, broad tendon that goes from the ball of the foot back to the heel. And when it stretches, it's maybe an inch or two longer than it's supposed to be. It allows the foot to lose the arch, and, and you get flat feet. Well, this is caused by the same thing that causes tennis elbow, the same thing that causes tendonitis, um, Achilles tendon uh, problems, uh, skin problems, saggy skin, wrinkles, those kind of things. It's a lack of nutrition for these parts. Now, do you, well, first of all, before I forget, how, how much do you weigh, Nick? I'm one of 50. 150, okay. Um, and how tall are you, sir? Uh, six and one half inch. Okay, so you're thin. You're a thin guy. And 150 pounds at six foot. Okay. Now, tell me, do you have any history of asthma as a kid? Mm, no, I've had leukemia. I mean, not, I mean um, pneumonia, walking pneumonia once. Okay. And did you ever have um, any diarrhea or constipation? Uh, the last decade, I had a, a, a long run of diarrhea, but I'm, I'm finding glucose-free is, gluten is helping free. me, and this is the first time I've ever heard you mention it. Okay, but I kind so of gluten, put so it, gluten-free has helped you get rid of the diarrhea. Yes. Okay, so this has contributed to the flat feet by not being able to absorb things. Okay. Do you have any noisy joints? Do your knees click when you squat down or do your shoulder click when you raise your arms over your head or move My something? father is like that, but mean pretty much no. Not yet. <laughs> I, I'm on the Austro XF. It's in powder form now, and I don't think it will ever happen. Okay, good. So you're on the 90? Just this month, yeah. Uh, essential 90s, uh, the whole starter pack, I have a one this month, yeah. Okay, so you've been on the starter pack, and you're also taking the Austro X Plus in the powder form. Yes. Okay. Well, at 150 pounds with these kind of problems, I would go ahead and take... Um, two doses of the calcium a day, a full dose of breakfast, which would be an ounce of the liquid or two scoops of the, of the powder, and uh, say 10, 12 ounces of water twice a day. I'd also have you take the, the um, um, Beyond Tan Tangerine 2.0 Nutri-Crystals, two scoops twice a day, and three of the EFA Pluses twice a day, and 15 Glucogel a day, five at breakfast, five at lunch, five at dinner, that's the raw materials to support and promote maintenance and repair of cartilage, ligaments, tendons, connective tissue, discs between the vertebrae, bone makes the bone itself. And uh, so I want you to take two of everything except for the glucogel. I want you to take five, three times a day. Okay, and that's going to require two healthy bone and joint packs, and um, that's where I would go with that. You're also going to get some pain relief, discomfort relief uh, by the CM cream that comes with each of those packs. And call us every couple of weeks. I think the thing you're missing is the glucogel. It sounds like you're on the right track, with, and you've seen some improvement. Uh, the diarrhea, as you say, will get better as you get on a gluten-free diet. Uh, we're very familiar with the gluten-free um, program. We actually have a gluten-free cookbook, and also in the book Hell's Kitchen and the book Epigenetics, uh, the gluten problem has a big, big place because you, you are not what you eat. That old adage, you are what you eat, is absolutely positively not true. 
You are what you absorb. There's a huge difference between what you eat and what you absorb. You can be digesting everything perfectly, and if you can't absorb it, it all comes out the other end as diarrhea. And so then you begin to absorb things by repairing your intestines, by getting on a gluten-free diet and taking the 90 cents of nutrients. You're able to absorb stuff, and the diarrhea goes away. So that's why that's all happening. Well, thank you, Shar. Super job. Uh, thank you, Doug and Susan. Superlative job as usual. God bless each and every one of you. God bless our troops. God bless our Navy SEALs. And God bless America.